How are you guys all doing today? Welcome back to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Manny Maradiege, live today on Thursday, October 17th. We got the start of the NFL Week 7 games tonight, kicking off between the Denver Broncos and the New Orleans Saints over here at 8.15 Eastern Time. We're going to talk about that and preview that game. Also, for the rest of the show, we got some questions that I thought of, some scenarios, some uh, things I wanted to go over with you guys to get your guys' thoughts and just talk about them, like some of the trades that I think must happen before the trade deadline. Also, the teams that need to win this week in order for their chances to stay alive or to avoid you know, just blowing the whole thing up. Plus, also, we're going to talk about the NFC North as well. So a lot to cover on today's show. Make sure to stick around. And before we get started, for you guys that want to get involved in the show and want to leave any questions, comments, or just any of your opinions that you'd want to share, please don't hesitate to do it. We always value your guys' insight and opinions on anything you guys have to say. So to make sure that's a guarantee and to make sure I see it and feature it on the show, there's an easy way to go about that just by using the new Super Chat feature that we have available to you guys now. Just by clicking the dollar sign at the bottom of the chat box, you can send in your Super Chat. In this way, it guarantees that your message gets on the air and it's also a fantastic way to support the channel and we rely on your support to keep bringing you the sports content you love and we always appreciate whenever you guys can do that for us. So go ahead and let us know what you're thinking. Hit the Super Chat button and let's keep this show as interactive, as exciting, and just conversational. Uh, I always love hearing what you guys have to say. So please don't hesitate to get involved with the show and leave anything you have to say using that new Super Chat feature. But with that now being the case, we can talk about the game that we have in store for us tonight. A very interesting matchup for a couple reasons, right? Week 7 kicks off. Uh, tonight in the home of the Super Bowl this year. There in the uh, the New Orleans Superdome, the Caesar Superdome, uh, where the Broncos will travel down there to New Orleans to face the, the Saints. The Denver Broncos currently sitting at 3-3 three and three after a loss to the Los Angeles Chargers. And the Saints are trying to do anything possible that they can to stop this four-game losing streak that they have going on after starting so promising at 2-0. They, uh, they haven't been able to stop the bleeding. And some of these games, you know, got away from them a little bit, like the Eagles game or even the, the Falcons game as well. They've been in a couple close ones, but this past week against the, uh, the Buccaneers wasn't so pretty. Uh, unfortunately, Derek Carr got hurt against the, the Chiefs. So, you know, you didn't really get to finish out strong like you would have in that game. But it's been it's been pretty tough because these losses haven't been you know blowouts by any means but you feel like you're close and then you know it, you just haven't been able to get over the hump so that's something that I'm sure the the Saints are going to try and get over tonight against a young Denver Broncos team that I think has surprised a lot of people and what's interesting about this game is that head coach Sean Payton returns to face his former team in his former home down there in New Orleans if you guys recall Sean Payton spent 10 and a half years as the head coach of the New Orleans Saints, nine playoff appearances in that time, and a Super Bowl. Impeccable stuff from Sean Payton down there in New Orleans, but now he, he's on enemy lines. He's on the other side trying to lead the Broncos to a win here against his former team. And what else is interesting is that the, the Saints head coach, Dennis Allen, obviously, he, uh, he spent 12 seasons on Sean Payton's staff. And the last six seasons as or in Sean Payton's you know tenure there for the New Orleans Saints, he uh, the last six seasons he was the defensive coordinator there. So um, obviously before he got promoted in 2022, when Sean Payton stepped down. But these two guys know each other very very well, and uh, it just adds to the the aura, the mystique around this game, which I think is uh, super fascinating to kind of make a decision on as of right now. And uh, you know. On this game, it's um, interesting just based on the fact, you know, Sean Payne and whatnot, but also the, the Saints have a lot on their plate with not as many of their star players playing, right? The biggest one being Derek Carr being labeled as doubtful, but 
like it says, I don't think he'll play, being listed as doubtful. It's not out technically, but usually when someone's listed as doubtful, um, it usually means they're not going to play. We don't really know when Derek is supposed to come back. It could be next week. It could be a couple weeks from now, but it looks like it's going to be Spencer Rattler again. Um, he got his first start, the rookie quarterback, last week against the Buccaneers, and it was going pretty well um, through the first half or three quarters. I forget how long into that game it was before ultimately the the Buccaneers just pulled away because they have more offense, because they have more firepower on that team. The uh, the Saints defense wasn't able to hold, and their offense, quite frank, frankly, also just wasn't able to keep up. So it was really close at one point if you were watching the game. But um, yeah, then you see the final scoreline, 51-27, to 27, and you're thinking like it wasn't close at all. But in reality... I, it was uh it was pretty surprising how Spencer Rattler came out and he is pretty much set to to have his second game tonight and also some more similarities between these two teams two rookie quarterbacks starting in this game uh Bo Nix and Spencer Rattler two guys that um obviously had a lot of the the success in college and whatnot at Oregon and Spencer Rattler at uh, South Carolina and I don't think I really expected Spencer Rattler to start this year. And even when Derek Carr got hurt, you know, he didn't come in right away. It was the other quarterback that uh, that came in. So Rattler got the vote of confidence from Dennis Allen, and he played pretty well. And now he's set to face off tonight against Bo Nix, a first-round rookie quarterback, obviously drafted by the uh, the Broncos. So that'll be interesting to see who kind of outduels the other one. And just giving you guys some more points on the, the Saints here before we move on to the matchups. Um a lot of injuries, a lot of injuries for the Saints, obviously. Um, the the report, the injury report, hasn't really come out yet definitively yet for uh, some of these teams in terms of inactive and active, but there's not going to be any Chris Olave. He's out with a concussion uh, on a short week. Rahid Shahid, their other wide receiver, is out because he is getting surgery on his meniscus injury, and based on that surgery... It's going to determine if he's able to come back at some point this year or if that's going to be it for his 2024 season. So a really tough break there for Shahid, who was having a pretty good season. Also, um, Taysom Hill is doubtful tonight, taking away another offensive option for the, uh, for the Saints and Spencer Rattler. So that means that the receivers tonight, the prominent weapons for, um, for a rookie quarterback, are going to be Bob Means. Mason Tipton, and Cedric Wilson Jr., and Jawan Johnson, of course, at tight end, which it, it wouldn't surprise me if you guys didn't know who most of those guys were, and um, that's what the Saints have to deal with tonight in trying to kickstart this offense back again and trying to trying to get something going, because obviously starting 2-0 and and then now being 2-4, and it's, it's not where you want to be because you feel like you've shown your your true potential, but now with the injuries and stuff like that and catching some tough breaks, it, it's extremely fr frustrating, I'm sure, for the Saints. And also, um, their defense, it, it's been all right in moments, but mostly for the, the entire season, it really hasn't been there, or at least up to par like what we saw from, from them last year, where this year now they're allowing the most yards per game, almost allowing 400 yards total per game, which is absurd for... Um, for, you know, this veteran defense, this experienced defense that always seems to, you know, stay stay together throughout the offseason, that's not a good number to give up. So as maybe inexperienced or not as heavily armed as the, the Broncos might be, giving up almost 400 yards to, to anybody on average seems to be like the Broncos have something to work with there, despite also them not having Pat Sertan in this game, also because of a concussion Josh Reynolds for the Broncos was put on IR. So they're down a couple of their big pieces, but still, unlike New Orleans, this defense for the Denver Broncos has been relentless with the quarterback pressure. They're second in the NFL with 22 sacks, only behind the Giants with 26. And uh, it keeps them in the game a lot. It keeps them close, within within arm's reach uh, of a lot of teams. And it might fall on Bo Nix most of the time to kind of deliver, but... In this game, where the, the opposition doesn't really have so much firepower as well, it's a, it's a game that I think it's really there for, for both of these teams. And now getting into the matchups a little bit that are really going to matter mostly for this game in, in determining it 
fall along those lines of those injuries, right? We have the Saints receivers, the Bob Means, the Cedric Wilsons, the um, the Mason Tiptons of the world, like I just mentioned, going up against this Denver secondary that doesn't have their best player. How are they able to produce? Are they able to produce? And is the Denver secondary able to stand up without their best player? That's going to be something to watch out for. Kind of also which receiving group and which you know defense as well kind of helps their uh, their rookie quarterback out a lot more. So that'll be interesting and important to to keep track of. Also, going a little bit further up for for both of these teams, the Denver defensive line going up against the Saints injured offensive line because the Saints again are not going to have Caesar Ruiz. They're um, I'm pretty sure they're also down a. Uh, their their center, I'm pretty sure as well. He's not back yet, so you know their the running game is so important to their entire offense. And if you can't get that going, if you can't have a a push sort of say to, to push the defensive line back, obviously it's 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 going to be ineffective. For as much also that you don't really have the receivers on the outside, it it, it could be looking a bit dire for the the Saints and the Broncos. Like we just mentioned, they're second in the NFL in sacks, so. If you're not able to hold up, it could be a much rougher outing for Spencer Rattler. And I think that's where this game's going to go. I'm predicting that the Broncos are going to go on the road. Sean Payton's going to walk into his old house, put his feet up, and get the win for, for his new team. And if everybody was healthy, I might go with the Saints in this game just because I like Olave a lot. And uh, Raheed Shahid's having a good game. And, of course, that running game looked very well for the the Saints, but that's not the case. So I can't really just base it off of that if they're missing all of their best players. So I'm going to go with Denver. Um, They have the the Cortland Suttons. They have the Javante Williams to kind of lean on. And I think also on the defensive side of the ball, more so than not, Sean Payton, I'm sure, is going to make Spencer Rattler very uncomfortable in this game. He's going to send a lot of pressure at him and force him to make all the right decisions in each of his throws and any sort of mistake can cost them in this game. So I feel like that's sort of where this game's going to go down. And I'm going to pick the Broncos to win this game. They'll go to 4-3, and three, and which is pretty good for them so far in this year where everybody thought it was going to be, you know, just this awful situation. Being 4-3, and three, I think, is as good as you can get for the Broncos. And unfortunately for the Saints, they're going to drop even further into this hole and become 2-5 and five after tonight's game. But let me know if you guys agree, disagree with that. The The game is set to kick off 8-15 Eastern time over here where I'm at. So we'll, uh, we'll keep updates on, on anything if any injury news has come, come in while, uh, while we're doing the show. But now we're going to move on to another topic. Some more questions that I had on my mind now that we are in week 7. This next segment we're going to talk about what trades, the top five trades that need to happen before the, the trade deadline comes on November the 5th. I have a list here of some trades that I would like to see happen, but also I feel like are necessary for these teams to really make a difference already heading towards the, the second half of the season. So we're going to come back with that and we're going to discuss all my points when we return after this quick break. <laughs> 